So these are the set of topics we are going to cover. So we are going to learn what is uh, what WSL is, WSDL is, and why uh, WSDL is used. And uh, WSDL is XML language. So we are going to see the document structure, and then we are going to see uh, XML vocabulary that makes up WSDL document, and uh, then we are going to study uh, message element. This is the one of the seven elements that make up WSDL document. We'll talk about the concept of operations and then we will talk about importing and authoring style and finally we will talk a little bit on WSDL 1.2. So what is and why WSDL? So WSDL is an XML language for describing web service. So it is a contract between service provider and service client. In fact, once a client has an access to WSDL, that is the only thing that is required for the client to know what services are available and how to invoke those services. Okay. So in WSDL, web service is described as a set of endpoints, and these endpoints are sometimes called ports. Okay, and this port or endpoint uh, is made of two parts. Uh, one is the abstract part, and the other one is a concrete binding part. Okay, uh, so abstract part includes operations and messages, and concrete binding part is defining for networking protocol. Uh, an address and encoding scheme. Okay, uh, so we're going to talk about these things in a bit more detail later on. So if you don't understand what I'm talking about in this particular, uh, in this two bullets, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, the reason they have this uh, separation is reusability of this abstract part. Okay, the reason is, uh, you know, as we talked about, uh, the SOAP could be deployed over different uh, transport. It could be HTTP, which is probably the mostly the case, but it could be over JMS or it could be SMTP. So, uh, the uh, when you create a WSDL, uh, you know, if you have the uh, abstract part uh, separately, then that could be imported uh, using a different uh, communication or networking protocol. Okay. Anyway, so don't worry about it. You know, I think uh, that might confuse you a little bit, but as long as you understand, WSDL is XML language for describing web service. That's the only thing that I want you guys to remember. So, uh, WSDL document has to be uh, provided, or is you know, is provided to the client for any web service. So if this is a web service, he has to provide web service description language document to the client. Okay, As I said before, that is the only contract that is needed between client and server. Okay, So that contract should actually specify uh, what services are available and uh, what makes up those services and how to invoke those services. So everything that is needed by the client should be specified in the web services description language document. Okay, and uh, this web service uh, could be actually communicating with other web services. So there could be credit card web service, hotel web service, airline web service, and in that in that case, this guy is playing the role of web service client of airline web service, or is playing the role of the client web service client, uh, as far as hotel web service is concerned. The same thing with this guy. So in that case, any communication between web service client and service provider has to be specify in a form of web services description language document. Okay? So any web service client and server communication there has to be one WSDL document. Okay? So that is a service contract. So how and where WSDL document is used? Typically uh, in a web service provider, okay, web service provider will actually have WSDL document available. Okay? And then WSDL document should be accessible to the client. Uh, in the long time ago, there was what is called the UDDI registry, which actually, you know, you can think of it as the registry of all the web services. And they actually provide the location of WSDL document of each service. Now, UDDI is rarely used these days, so this is probably not important. So the way the client can get an access to WSDL document is maybe service provider will post it on the website. Okay? And uh, or it might actually send with the document to uh, the client through email. Okay, so as long as uh, client has an access to with the document, 
then client should be able to invoke it. Okay. So why we want to use WSDA? So again, WSDA enables automation of communication details between communicating partners, meaning client and server, so web service, service provider, and the client. So machines can read WSDA document, and machines can invoke a service defined WSDA document. So because WSDA document defines everything that is needed in precise manner in terms of what services are available and how to invoke those services, uh, the uh, even machines can read with the document and you should be able to know how to what services are available and how to invoke the, those services. So you know actually uh, the uh, SOAP, uh, the uh, lab exercises, you know we were able to test the web service right. Uh, the uh, because we actually provide the WSDL document and uh, you know the uh, NetBeans uh, should be able to read WSDL document. It knows what services are available and how to invoke it. Okay. Uh, it could be also used for arbitration. So uh, you know you can find out whether communication is based on particular WSDL standard. When the client sends a message, SOAP message to uh, the service provider, the SOAP message has to be compliant. Uh, you know the as defined in the WSDL document. Okay, so there could be some arbitrator in the middle to uh, to say, oh, this SOAP message is invalid or not. Okay, based on what has been specified in WSDL. Okay, yeah, one of the things as we are going to see in a few seconds, one of the things that you specify inside the WSDL document is XML schema. <coughs> okay. All right, so let's move on to document structure. So this is the uh, complete WSDL document structure. So here we have defined WSDL namespace, right? And prefix is uh, WSDL. So we are using WSDL prefix for all uh, elements defined in WSDL namespace, like a definitions, types, message, port type, binding, service. So these are all elements defined in uh, the WSDL namespace, okay, and uh, target namespace, and uh, then we have uh, two source namespaces, TNS and SOAP bind, okay. All right, so basically it has types and has a messages, has a port type, and has a binding and service. So we are going to learn each of these elements in detail in the following slide. Okay, so these are WSDL namespaces. So these are the namespaces that are defined in WSDL specification. Okay, so uh, all right. Now we are going to learn WSDL XML vocabulary. Uh, those types, message, service, binding, port. Uh, you know these things using a very simple web services description language document. So the web service that we want to describe using WSDL is uh, stack code service. It's a very simple uh, stack code service. So there is only one single operation called the get less trade price. Okay, and uh, it's going to be deployed using SOAP 1.1 over HTTP. And uh, request message has a type called uh, re request message is basically a ticker symbol whose type is string and response returns a price and that is going to be the type of float. So this is a very simple uh, web service we'd like to describe using WSDL. Okay. So these are WSDL elements. Okay. So these are the seven elements that we are going to learn. Okay. Among these seven, these four types, message, operation, and port type, these part represent abstract description of WSDL, and this binding and port and service they describe concrete binding part. Okay, so again, I'm going to explain uh, what that means later on. So let's move on with types. So types basically is using XML schema and is it it includes XML schema of the XML message that is being exchanged. Okay, so let's say an example. So if you want to send uh, XML message that the request message should contain uh, ticker symbol 
whose type is string and the response message uh, contains a price element whose type is a float so inside the schema it is a genuine XML schema okay yeah in this case it doesn't really have to be a complex type because we are just sending one single element right okay so it doesn't really have to be a complex type it could be even simple type okay uh, the uh, so but you know as far as the syntax is concerned is a valid XML schema okay so this is schema definition and we have two elements defined okay and we are using anonymous complex type right okay so this element is called the trade price request and it is a type of this anonymous complex type which includes a single element called the ticker symbol whose type is string response uh, element is called the trade price and uh, again it's a complex it is defined as a complex type and it contains a single element called the price and the type of it is float okay so we have defined the two global element okay uh, the uh, the uh, as complex type okay all right so this is type so you can think of types is basically XML schema next uh, is messages and operations and port type so these three uh, messages and operations and port type along with types uh, they are describing abstract part of your whistle document okay so messages are describing abstract type typed definition of the data being exchanged and operation is basically combination of input message and output message and it actually is describing an action okay so action is made of input message and output message so in our previous hands-on lab you know when you send uh, when you actually call the say hello right so you know the uh, request message contains uh, sanction and response message uh, contains hello sanction right so com combination of those input and output messages uh, making up a single operation of say hello right okay uh, port type is a collection of operations okay so port type you can think of it as abstract defini definition of a abstract definition of abstract definition of a service the reason we call abstract definition of a service is because it doesn't say anything about what communication protocol you're going to use and what is the encoding scheme you are, you are going to use okay so let's see examples of this so we have defined two messages the first message is called get last trade price input and it contains a part okay and that part is the type of trade price request so that is actually coming from here okay and this is this is the uh, uh, response message and it's named as get last trade price output and again it's actually uh, using the element a global element defined in the XML schema now up to this point you don't know whether this is a request message or this is response message even though you know it has the name of input and output so you can kind of assume as a human being that this is probably request message and this is probably response message okay now but machines don't know up to this point okay now third element is port type port type is named as a stock code port type here and port type as I said in the previous slide is a collection of operations okay in our example we have a single operation called the get last trade price an operation is made of input message and output message so this input message is pointing to this this message this is the output message pointing to this message this guy so now the machines even machines know that this message is used for request message this message is used for response message and there could be multiple operations but in our example here we have a single operation that made up of input message and output message okay all right okay so let me finish the binding part uh, the uh, important service and I'm going to uh, pause and get some questions from you guys okay alright so so far what we have described what we have learned are the elements that abstractly describe uh, a web service through messages and uh, operations and port type okay now 
these next three elements uh, now you are actually dealing with the concrete communication protocol so binding element specifies concrete communication protocol such as HTTP or SMTP and things like that and the data format uh, so this data format is called encoding okay so protocol communication protocol examples are SOAP 1.1 over HTTP SOAP 1.1 over SMTP so these are communication protocols that can be specified using binding okay uh, encoding examples are SOAP encoding and RDF encoding and things like that. Okay, so we're going to talk about this one in a bit more detail later on. Now, port defines single communication endpoint, so it is the one that specifies the endpoint address for binding. Okay, so it should actually be if you're using HTTP as transport protocol here, then it's supposed to be in the form of URL. If you're using SMTP as a transport protocol, then port should contain email address. Okay, so as I said before, WSDL document contains everything the client needs in order to find out what services are available and how to invoke those services, right? So how to invoke those services should include address information. So that address information is defined in this port element. Okay and then service is an aggregate set of related ports so you can think of service as a collection of ports so let's see in example let's see examples of this so this is a binding element right and on the top this is a name of this binding now what it does is that it's binding though binding that port type that we defined so remember this stack code port type so this is basically a port type that we have defined okay we are the binding element is binding this port type which is a collection of operations with concrete communication protocol so concrete communication protocol is specified with this in this case it's using SOAP and the transfer protocol is HTTP okay so if you are using SOAP over uh, SMTP then it's going to be uh, you know schemas.xml soap.org slash soap slash smtp okay so these two lines specify the communication protocol again typically soap over http and then for each operation you are going to specify what is the encoding scheme okay so when you're using literal okay what it means is you are going to use the content well it, what it means is the contents uh, actually no let me actually repeat so, uh, I want to actually explain this guy <laughs> sorry so when you actually specify the uh, the communication protocol you can specify the style as well the, this style could be document or RPC style so in the hands-on lab exercise you know you're going to actually build WSDL document uh, the uh, of document style and RPC style so what's the difference when you're using document style what that means is that uh, the body of SOAP message reflects XML message, XML data. If you're using RPC style, that means the body of SOAP message rep represent name of the method and set of parameters for that method. Okay, so that is what this style is all about. Now, in terms of encoding, that is like a literal. So when you're saying literal. Uh, what, me, what it means is that I'm using XML schema as encoding scheme. Okay, so data types are represented using XML schema. Okay, so that is binding. So binding is representing uh, co concrete communication protocol along with uh, encoding scheme. Okay, now the service is basically collection of ports, and port is you specify you provide an you provide the actual endpoint address for that binding and because this guy is using HTTP the binding uh, the uh, the uh, so y this is a binding so this is binding basically what it does this port, port element is doing is that it's actually providing endpoint address for this binding okay so this is a stack code so binding is actually giving an address because this guy is using HTTP the actual address inside port is going to be in the form of HTTP. 
okay if uh, the transport is SMTP then it's probably a uh, location of SOAP address element is going to be uh, email address okay so this is a big picture okay so port type is basically collection of operations an operation is made of input message and output message right and this port type is bound to a particular communication protocol typically SOAP over HTTP okay and the service is basically providing an address for this binding so you know the port should have an address okay and uh, the service could have multiple ports and the service B could have other set of ports okay so this is the uh, web service invocation so let me actually finish up to this point and uh, I'm gonna pause and uh, I'm going to uh, entertain some questions you guys have okay so the client will send a SOAP message okay so SOAP message uh, could contain a part so part is basically representing XML messages okay so this is a request message and then this is a response message okay so for each message part is some data type uh, so it's using XSD meaning XML schema predefined types like int or something like that and this input and output message form, a, form an operation Okay, so combination of input message and output message make up an operation and collection of operations form a port type and the binding specifies how operations are accessed using particular protocol such as SOAP over HTTP okay so it's a little bit of repeat of what I talked about okay so I'm gonna actually pause at the moment and uh, let's see whether you guys have any questions okay so we talked about uh, seven elements right starting from types and uh, message and then operation then port type those are abstract part of WSDL document and then we talked about binding element and then we talk about the service element and service element contains port element okay now let's talk about the message element a bit more detail so message element is made of one or more logical parts like this so you know this is WSDL definition and this is a message and uh, name could be my message or whatever and then it does contain a part okay so element attribute refers to XSD using QName okay so basically you can specify element or uh, you can specify the type okay but WSI basic profile says you should use element only so you cannot have in fact type so if you have uh, if you use type that is a valid WSDL document but WSI basic profile says uh, that's not recommended okay alright so element attribute refers to XML element using QName type attribute yes so this type could be some type but again use always element okay so I'm gonna actually explain that concept one more time when we do the exercise but for now it might be confusing to you guys okay so don't worry about it so in this case this is the uh, uh, the, um, uh, the when we define the message so instead of using so in WSDL uh, when you're creating a part you can actually specify the type like uh, you know like an item or a PO type that is a valid WSDL syntax however WSI basic profile says that's not in WSA basic profile says you know you should actually define the type like this as explicit type and then you have to use element to point to it okay okay so uh, if you don't follow this uh, convention then WSA basic profile says ah this uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, WSDL does not follow uh, WSA basic profile so it will flag it out okay types of operations so types of operation could be one way uh, in this case endpoint receive the message but it doesn't send back the response message request and response message is that endpoint receive the message then send back the uh, correlated response message okay so the way that you are going to specify one-way message is that you are going to have only input message rather than output message in your operation so operation could be one way or request and response so if it is one way then it's going to have just input message uh, if it is a request and response operation then it will have input and output message 
So this is one way operation. So you can see it has a single uh, input message, right? And this is a request and response message. So uh, the uh, submit purchase, this is input and output uh, message. And you could also have a fault message as well. Okay, so these two uh, request and response operation. Okay, so importing and authoring style. Okay, so authoring style recommendation uh, is to uh, uh, to have reusability and maintainability in mind. Okay, so you could create wizard documents in three different parts, three separate parts. One is data type definition, which is XML schema definition. So example we have seen is that we have all these three things in a single document. XML schema definition, abstract definitions, which is uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, message and operation and port type. And specific service bindings. Okay? So this is the uh, binding element and service element and port element. Okay? Uh, so instead of having all these things in a single document, you might want to have them in three different parts and then each document underneath will import the, uh, the uh, document it needs. Okay? So let's see examples of this. So this is XML schema. Okay? So this is the, uh, you know, basically the XML schema that we have seen. So we are going to capture this guy as a separate file called the stack code.xsd file. Okay? So again, it contains these two global elements, okay? And then this is the abstract part, uh, which is called stack code WSDL, okay? So here it's going to import the XSD file that we just created as a separate file, okay? The reason this separation is useful is because I can use uh, this XML schema in different with the document, right? So usability of this is enhanced, okay? Same thing over here. Here we define only abstract part, like a message and port type. Okay? And uh and operations. Oops, operations. Okay. And now the third document is the one that actually import this uh second uh document, stack code WSDL, and here it's going to define concrete uh binding. So in you know in terms of what is the transport is going to use and what is the encoding scheme is going to use and what is the address. Okay? The reason again to have this separation of this abstract part is that because this could be actually used in another WSL document, they might actually use a uh, different transport. You know, maybe it's using SMTP or JMS. Okay? Okay, so WSDL 1.2 uh, is described XML info set and uh, it's aligned with the SOAP 1.2 and uh, it does also define few more message exchange patterns, okay? But uh, in terms of uh, the reality, most of the implementations out there are still SOAP 1.1 and uh, WSDL 1.1 based. Okay, so that is the end of the presentation. So now let's actually take a look at the Hansel app, okay? Uh, hands on lab is uh, the... Um, uh, that is WSD, oh, not that one. Oh, okay. WS underscore WSDL basics. Okay. So here we are going to actually build, oops, sorry. Here we are going to actually build WSDL document using WSDL editor from uh, Eclipse. Okay. And um, you can certainly build with the document using your favorite editor. Okay, uh, but here we are going to use uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Eclipse. Okay, uh, so here we are going to create two um, uh, WSDL document. One is using RPC literal, and the other one is document literal. Okay, all right, and uh, and also we are going to study uh, the example with the document. Okay. So example one, what we want to do here is that we want to add two operations. Uh, one is add method, which receive uh, two in, int type, and then hello uh, operation. So these are two operations. Okay. So uh, the uh, uh, and uh, then we are going to use a soap over HTTP as a concrete transport binding protocol. Okay. Alright, so let's actually try this. Okay. 
uh, we have already created XML examples uh, the uh, project before uh, you can create another one if you want to that's fine okay uh, and uh, then let me just start the Eclipse first and uh, then we are going to create uh, with doll so we you are going to say uh, file new other and uh, if you expand web services you are going to see with doll uh, file okay and uh, so here uh, I'm going to uh, create a new with doll file so I'm going to say uh, this is a folder my with doll s and the name of the uh, whistle is going to be my whistle rpc literal dot wsdl okay and uh, then you can select uh, so binding options okay so uh, we're going to try document literal and rpc literal so we're going to try with the rpc literal first so as i talked about if you're using rpc style that means uh, the contents in the SOAP body represent uh, method and parameters. In the document style, they represent XML uh, document. Okay, so finish. So now it's going to actually provide uh, this uh, you you know UI. Okay, so you don't really have to use this UI unless you want to. Okay, so as long as you understand the syntax of you know the uh, uh, resulting uh, with the document, uh, that's fine. So it basically creates this one as a default. So it contains a uh, default operation called new operation. Okay. So you can change the name of this new operation to uh, add, or you can create a new one. So here uh, you can zoom in and zoom out. Okay. Right. So basically, uh, the uh, you can take a look at the source. So for now, it doesn't really have anything except the new operation that uh, you know it automatically creates. Okay. As a service and it as a port. Okay. So we are going to add add operation. Okay, so you basically uh, right click it and then select add operation, and uh, then you are going to give input and output. So you're going to change this one to X, and the type of it supposed to be int, right? So right click it. Uh, for now, it's set as a string as a default. So you're going to actually set the type to int. Okay, and the uh, same thing for uh, oh here. Then we are going to add part. Okay, uh, we're gonna take it up the output. So here you are going to add part. Okay. So the part, yeah, and then we uh, the oh okay. So you know we basically add another part because uh, we just added x. We need to add y. Okay. So right click add part, and uh, we are going to add y. Uh, again, it has to be in type. Okay. All right, output type is supposed to be int type as well. So you're going to actually name it as result, and then the type is supposed to be int. Okay. All right, and uh, you're going to delete this new operation because uh, you know we do not need new operation. Instead, we need hello. Right. So you're going to actually create the hello operation doing the same thing. So basically, hello, and then input is supposed to be name, and output is supposed to be result hello, and they are both the string type. Okay. All right, so if you take a look at the resulting source code, uh, basically we have defined uh, the uh, uh, message, two messages. Well, actually, uh, the oh, so this one should not be there because we deleted it, right? Okay, yes, this one should be removed in my in this example. Let me just uh, write it down. Okay, so I'm gonna clean it up. Uh, and then we have uh, two, th four messages. So request message for add, uh, response message for add operation, and this is for hello and uh, hello request and response. Okay. And uh, oh, why we have actually multiple? This is uh oh yeah. Looks like uh, I I actually play around it, and then yeah. So this this thing, this one, all should be removed. Okay, so what we need is this part, and uh, then response part. Then I also have uh, this hello response and hello response. Okay, yeah, it looks like uh, this is something that needs to be removed as well. Okay, so there should be four messages, uh, two messages uh, for add and two messages for uh, hello. Okay, and uh, then we have uh, port type. Okay, so port type is a set of operation, and there should be only two operations: add and hello right okay 
and then we have a binding element okay which is binding this uh, the uh, uh, port type this is the uh, port type and uh, again we are using uh, transport of HTTP now this is the RPC okay so instead of uh, document uh, I'm creating RPC style and this is an operation name okay and uh, then we have a service uh, service actually provides uh, you are basically binding this uh, binding binding this binding with this port address okay now one thing you notice is that in this case you don't see any type definitions right the reason is because we chose to use RPC style remember RPC is uh, rep representing uh, the name of the method and parameters right okay so in this case this is actually in this case this is actually name of the method and these are parameters okay so there is no XML document needed because you know it's rep representing uh, the request the uh, method and parameters now in exercise 2 we are going to we are going to create doc and neutral so when you're using document style that means you are going to use the contents of soap body as XML message which means we need XML schema so that's the reason we have to create XML schema file so this is the same XML schema file that we have created okay so you know basically this is the XML schema file that we have created okay and uh, so and now we are going to create a whistle document so when you are using document style first you have to do is XML schema of the messages that you want to uh, send and receive and then you can create a whistle document so in this case it's a whistle document and then I say document literal okay and then it will actually the uh, you're gonna actually delete this guy new operation we don't need it and uh, then we're gonna add operation okay and then set and add parameters okay now at this point when you actually the uh, the uh, you click set element okay uh, you know you can create a new element or you can actually set the existing element this element is supposed to be coming from uh, XML schema okay so this is the XML schema that we have defined right here right okay all right so at once you are done with this okay you can see in this case it has a schema included the reason is because we use document style this document style meaning the contents of soap message meaning the contents of soap body should represent XML document and that XML document is represented by the schema in this case the schema is this schema location of this file xny.xsd file and uh, yeah so you know that actually the schema element uh, the element uh, from the schema is actually this guy global element xny and new operation response okay oh actually yeah looks like I didn't actually change this one with the hello okay alright uh, exercise 3 is you're going to take a look at example with the documents so you know if you expand phone banking uh, you are going to see uh, phone banking WSDL document and if you go to other uh, sample uh, project directory you're going to see WSDL documents you can take a look at the WSDL document and see it makes sense to you okay so in this case it's a phone banking uh, it's using everybody is using document star so you're gonna see rarely any uh, you know the RPC star Okay, so because it's using document style, you are going to see XML schema. Okay, so you can see this is a general XML schema defining uh, several elements and uh, types. Okay, and uh, then uh, you see multiple messages, and then you see port type, which is a collection of operations, and each operation is using the messages you defined, right? And then you have a binding, which defines the transport. Okay, typically SOAP over HTTP and then the uh, encoding is again typically literal okay for all those operations and then you have a service which contains a port okay and uh, basically port is providing an address this is the address okay and you can take a look at other with the document all right okay so uh, right now it's actually 15 minutes to 3 so 
let's have 10 minutes break and I'm gonna give you uh, 15 minutes to try this so we'll get back uh, 10 minutes after 2 o'clock I'm sorry 3 o'clock